A question most people battle with when they've completely ruptured their Achilles tendon is whether they should have surgery or not. So let's look at what the research shows. What treatment is best for a complete Achilles tendon rupture? What are the results of surgery versus conservative treatment where you just manage it with a boot? Is there a difference in re-rupture rate or how good you can function afterwards? And does it help if you add things like stem cell therapy or PRP injections? Now, if you're looking for advice for partial Achilles tendon ruptures, we've also made videos about those, and I'll link to those in the description of this video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareika. I'm one of the physiotherapists from TreatMyAchilles.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment of any type of Achilles injury, all done via video call. Have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to our website. What does the research show? Do you really need surgery for a complete rupture? Actually, not necessarily, but it really depends on your goals and your specific circumstances. So let's look at all the factors that can influence your decision. The first is the functional activities you want to be getting back to and the functional outcomes. So what we mean with this is how well your calf and Achilles complex can contract and propel you forward in different types of movements. What the research is currently showing is that if you follow a conservative treatment plan where your foot is immediately immobilized in plantar flexion in a boot and you start to put weight through that boot at a after a couple of weeks, still in plantar flexion, plus you follow a staged rehab plan afterwards, you can recover just as well as people who have surgery. And the reason you need those three elements is being in plantar flexion allows the tendon to grow together, the early mobilization stimulates the tendon to grow better, and then the rehab plan carefully gets the movement back and strengthens the tendon to the previous level. However, there is some research that suggests if you're a high-level athlete, you may actually perform better in jumping and plyometric activities after surgery than com uh, compared to conservative treatment. So that may play into your decision with this. However, there's a lack of research that actually compares conservative treatment that incorporates the elements I've just spoken about with surgery. We may find that if we have more studies out there and larger studies where they actually compare a conservative plan that incorporates these three principles compared to surgery, there's not much of a difference. We just don't know at this point. So bottom line, with the current evidence, if you are a high performance athlete and jumping and plyometric type things are really, really important for you to be at your max, then surgery may be the better option. For everybody else, it's possible that conservative treatment, as long as it follows those principles that I've just mentioned, is likely just as good a bad option and even better because it doesn't have as many side effects. I've also made a video where I go into detail about the conservative rehab plan and how you have all of these elements on a week to week basis. So have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to that one. Next, your surgeon may actually look at the size of the gap between the tendon ends when your foot is in fully pointing down position, plantar flexion. So there is some research that shows if that gap when your foot is fully pointed down is more than 10 millimeters, it doesn't do so well with conservative treatment. It does better with um, surgery. But then other studies again show that actually the gap doesn't make matter much. It's more about the rehab protocol. So we're not clear on how much that affects it, but your surgeon will make the call as to whether they think that that tendon has the potential to heal properly with a conservative plan or not, depending on that gap size. If you're finding this video useful, please remember to hit like and subscribe. It will really help the channel to reach more people. What about the re-rupture risk? Because I mean, nobody wants to tear Achilles tendon twice. Regardless of the type of treatment you have, you will have a slightly increased risk of re-rupturing your Achilles tendon afterwards. At the moment, the research is showing that the re-rupture risk when you have surgery is lower than when you have conservative treatment. But you'll see there's quite a wide range in risk with conservative treatment, which may mean that it's not just the type of treatment that's the issue here, but likely also the rehab protocol. So we need more research that incorporate the type of study that we spoke about with those three principles and look at the re-rupture risk there versus uh, surgery to know whether it's actually the protocol that's being followed versus purely the fa fact that it's surgery versus conservative treatment. Conservative treatment also decreases your risk of other complications. So surgery has been shown to increase your risk of sural nerve injuries as well as infection 
and it may also increase your risk of having chronic pain afterwards. One thing that can really reduce your re-rupture risk, regardless of whether you go for surgery or conservative treatment, is if you follow a functional rehab plan as part of that treatment protocol. Now, we have made detailed videos about both the post-surgery as well as conservative rehab plans that is currently shown to get the best results. I'll put links to those videos in the description of this one. The most important factor that can influence your outcomes when you're following a conservative treatment plan is if your foot is not immediately immobilized in a plantar flexed position or you are immobilized in a boot and you keep on taking that boot off and moving your foot too far into dorsiflexion too early in your treatment plan. Because what happens then is the tendon ends can't grow back together properly and the tendon ends up healing in a lengthened position and then you can't get your full function back. Or it ends up not healing properly and you need surgery and then the surgery can become quite complex because then the tendon ends can separate quite far and you may even need a tendon transplant or transfer from a, a different muscle. The main factor that can cause a poor outcome for surgical treatment is if you are too aggressive with your dorsiflexion stretches too early in the, in the rehab plan. So dorsiflexion means that you're bringing the foot or the toes closer to your shin bone. And the Achilles tendon can feel really, really stiff after surgery. So it's quite common that people want to feel that they've got to stretch it out, but actually it needs time to properly knit together and for those stitches to hold. If you're too aggressive with the stretches, we're starting to think that actually that may then cause the tendon also to lengthen and heal in a lengthened position and then you don't get your full function back. So again, it's important to not try to rush the rehab to get back to your activities because it needs a certain period of time at a certain level for everything to heal properly. Sometimes your surgeon may suggest that you have a PRP injection or a stem cell injection to help the tendon heal. For PRP injections, they take your own blood and they spin it really quickly that they separate the plasma out and the platelets. And they take that platelet-rich plasma and inject it in the gap between the tendon ends. The thinking is that that will help stimulate the healing process. Now, at the moment, the research is showing that mm, it likely doesn't work. In a recent study where they did a large control trial looking at 230 patients and they injected them either with PRP injections or with placebos, they didn't find any benefit from the PRP at 24 week or two year follow up afterwards. Now, this was done on patients managed conservatively. There currently isn't any research or good quality research looking at the effect for surgical treatment. So we don't know exactly what happens there. But current advice is that PRP likely doesn't have that bigger effect on the healing process when you've got a complete rupture. When it comes to stem cell therapy, there is some evidence that it can help with tendon healing, but most of the trials have been done on animals so far and the studies are quite small. I've discussed stem cell therapy in detail in a different video and I'll link to that one as well. So you can have a look at that if you're interested in that. Brilliant, hope you found that useful. Now, please hit like and subscribe so more people can find the channel. And if you need more help with your Achilles rupture, yes, we can help, but not immediately. The best thing to do if you suspect that you've torn your Achilles tendon is go see a doctor immediately or go to the emergency department in the hospital because the more quickly you can get it scanned and immobilized in the correct position when you've torn it, the better your treatment results will be. Also, for that period that you're immobilized in a boot, it's really best to see a physiotherapist in person we can usually only safely take over your rehab after about eight weeks. During that initial period, it's better to see somebody face to face who can properly observe things and help guide your range of motion. After eight weeks, the rehab usually becomes a bit more active and then we can help you achieve your full potential. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link to the website in the description of this video. You're welcome to reach out via email as well. Take care.